Yeah, I, I like the lineup because. Five yeah, it's just a matter of seeing what J178 want to go with, and it gives you that flexibility. They know they don't have final pick, so it should be pretty obvious by the final pick for Virtus Pro what they're actually running where. But we see these teams kind of leave it open more often, right? Like Mag already could be the three, he could be the two, he could even be the five or the four. We have a Legion picked up super early on too. I mean, not super early. Well, not super the early, but like in the, in the they've made stage, their lanes obvious for the most, right? Like it's it's becoming pretty solid now. The Legion should be the off lane. Slark should be safe. It, it's still you still don't know if the Lash is going to be mid or yes not, or, or support, and that's pretty much all we all that we are thinking about when it comes to Jay. Uh, when it comes to Virtus Pro, they st still have like many ways to round this lineup uh with like you can go with something like a troll versus the legion on the lane you can get something that's good versus her or you can go and pick your uh mid now as you don't have the last pick and give away that lena isn't mid we'll see what they opt to go for they already have any saves we right now whereas the legion commander gives them oh, the oh, yeah, we go. That's, a, that's actually a really good pick that i didn't think about and that's constantly picked right now like yeah. bloodseeker is really popular at the moment and uh it's it used to be the best counter to Slark. Like Slark, if you look at the pubs and the win rate of Slark versus Bloodseeker, it's going to be something like 30, 40 percent. Um, Bloodseeker is really good. Uh, Slark can never use his ultimate properly because, but I mean, he can't get low and use his ultimate Five because Bloodseeker um, keeps a vision on him, and like because of that, this hero just changes the way Slark has to play. It it changes it completely. Uh, what J178 could do is crush Bloodseeker in the lane. If it's like Keeper plus Bloodseeker, it's not really the strongest lane, and Legion plus one could destroy them. So um, I sure. think it's important for, for, for them to do well versus this Lark on the lane. Yeah, I so, feel like this Legion should, in theory, run over Bloodseeker. Like, Bloodseeker has sustain, but we've seen what Legions do in these melee matchups. There's a few exceptions. But the typical kind of approach is you literally just run into the creep wave and you hit the hero and get those counter attacks out. But Zeus, oh, all right. Blood Seekers. Wow. <laughs> Here we go. 2015 is calling Virtus Pro and it wants its heroes back. Feels good. Definitely be back with Avengers, the decent hero here. Also, if you're a Legion and you're getting late in this game, like before pre BKB, you don't feel good about going for any duel other than the Zeus, right? Because otherwise, you risk just getting nuked down and instantly giving over that damage. You have no saves though on the side of uh, Virtus Pro. It's true. I feel like they had to lean with this though, right? Like a final pick Oracle hit. I don't think I would have done it. Uh, the Abaddon is already gone, so that's not an option either. This is another one of those games, Liz. It feels like not fully because you're leaning this time around, but where you're really relied on a really good RP to win you these fights in this game. It's definitely true because not only do you have no saves, you no don't have any big reliable catch on the side of Virtus Pro. Uh, at the same time, you could run over J178, but these three heroes without the Slark, that is, like Undying Lash and Legion, they're. They're definitely capable at holding their ground comes mid-game and uh, slow down that aggression until Stark is online and he can fight. Or we'll see. But uh, Virtus Pro, it's definitely a team that has a good combo of heroes at the moment with the Bloodseeker and Zeus. Also, one thing is really important to say for them. You don't know if Lina is mid or Zeus. It still can be either one of those. Zeus is a pretty good position for too. Uh, I... I think 90% it's Zeus mid, but I'm not certain. Like, it still could be Lina too. It, it still could, could be Lina, yeah. It kind of leaves your lanes, your out lanes at least, potentially very weak, right? Because if you're running the Lina mid, like Zeus can nuke, but you don't really have the control to get you kills. Okay. It feels like it would definitely be the Zeus now in the mid. I mean, it depends who's going to pick see. where. Yeah, there you go. yeah. Zeus is mid. Zeus is mid. Save is going to play play that position for Lina. I mean, uh, Lina plus Magnus is just so much stronger than uh, Zeus plus Magnus on the off lane. That's why I believe they they opted to go for this one hundred percent. And also, as you just stated, Zeus is a bit better versus Pugna. You can always use that Arc Lightning to um, to last it, even if you're decrepified. Pugna overall is a decent pick when it comes to like that. 
Wars, right? That Wars will do a lot, and the Crab Five versus Bloodseeker is also good. But uh, Pagna is also very susceptible to dying from magic remaining. damage. He, um, he's pretty squishy early on, and Zeus ulti, Lina ulti, and he's just gone. Uh, we'll we'll see we'll see how this game pans out. I think both of these teams. Uh, if I'm looking at the draft, I think it's something 50-50. On one side, you have the Bloodseeker that's really good versus the Slark, but on the other, you have this team that looks a little bit easier to execute. Um, you have Lush support plus and dying, and these other three cores. Uh, that are capable of doing quite a lot, and it comes mid game. And Bloodseeker, that's his, uh, that's his time as well. So we'll see who who will basically outplay um, who in this match. No, most definitely. And when you look at the nature of these drafts, J one seven eight has a bit more snowball potential, right? On multiple heroes, Legion and Slark, namely. Whereas BP, they might be a bit more content to sit back and farm. There's some very big items they can get. There is no denying that if Epileptic pops off in the lane, this game could be over fast because it directly counts the start, but also Bloodseeker is one of those mid-game heroes that can seriously take control of the game. So there's potential on both sides. I do like the J178. That that risk we associate with Slark, right? About uh, the Bloodseeker being able to see you and you can't heal up. They have got heroes that kind of offset that with a press the attack, with a life drain. There are potential saves for this Slark still. We'll just have to see if they can actually execute when it matters. I mean, Pugna especially tends to fall back to, at least half the time, a medic role, right? Past like the 25 minute mark, he starts to build in such a way that he's there to buff up someone else. That's good stuff. Lane wise, it's more or less what we expected. Especially, yeah. I like this top especially, right? Because these two are so fast, they could potentially run anyone down the lane. Lash and Legion, you mean? Yes. I think uh, they are very fast and also uh, they dish out a lot of damage versus Bloodseeker. One big thing is if he tries to go for Lash Rack and he has Diabolic Edict leveled up, he can't really man up versus that with Blood Rage. And also at the same time, Legion Commander with the passive with Moment of Courage, she can just stand and fight him too. So um, it's not really the easiest lane for a Bloodseeker. Can be rough as well because you're not getting synergy out of the call. It's not like one of those lanes we were talking about with the chakra magic cooldowns where you benefit. It's a blood seeker. There's not really much that you can assist him with in terms of cooldowns. Look at the blood seeker. He is alone at the top. So they're looking to secure both these rooms. Meanwhile, bot the VP do move down to secure for two as well. All right. Creaky. Creaky, creaky chair right uh, there. I thought someone was sneaking into your room, your like your dog. No, that's what you get when you have no wheels on your chair. <laughs> uh, I mean, you chose to steal it out of uh, a Mercedes. Yeah. Top lane, Petrara and Big Nam secure the two runes. On the bottom lane, Rezo and Save, they um, just take two for themselves as well. Yeah. Two, for, two for two. Everyone being pretty calm at the start here. Especially important for 178. They want a stable start to the lanes. After all, VP is one game away from securing a spot, whereas J178, they prefer to get it the first time around. There's at least two slots for CIS and EU in this qualifier. Question is, do we see early point into the Empower? I'm wondering. I feel like not until at least three, right? Because you've already leveled the Shockwave mm -hmm. and you want the Skewer. I don't know, like Sewer doesn't really help you too much versus a Slark that will be level 2. So maybe because of that we'll see Empower instead. But Skewer is usually what we do see. It's like uh, you go Shockwave into Skewer into Empower and then you decide what which one you want to max. With Alina I think maxing out that Empower is really good too on the lane. Absolutely. Gives you a potential to just turn around whereas if you level the Skewer say Plantamos jumps on you, you're always going to be running away. There's no moment you go, actually, we could turn around and kill him. Exactly. Mid, meanwhile, fairly even as expected. There is an early point into the ward from Pikachu. Just trying to punish no one a bit. Also, that mana degen, you do feel it. Actually, this has been quiet so far. I don't... It'd be interesting if kills happen top anytime soon, just because... There's a lot of elusiveness to this lane, right? It's more like there's a, a lot of elusiveness, casual but burn. at the same time, there's a lot of uh, chances that one team is going to bait another. 
like Bloodseeker baiting the Legion or vice versa, it's, it's definitely possible. Uh, however, there's always that Keeper of the Light with Blinding Light to help the Bloodseeker out if he's aggressed upon. Fair point. Well, Solo is burning most of his regen so far. There's an argument, right? Like, maybe you end up less regen than Bignum, but the Bloodseeker is the one that's going to benefit from all these heroes being low. Mm -hmm. At least when he starts leveling it. So far, he's Blood Rage and Blood Riot level 2. It's going to be interesting as well, because I feel like I'm seeing a lot more Blood Riot maxes out first, maybe. And usually, Blood Rage is like 2 points max. There we go. That's the Blinding Light and instantly pets Shara. Just has to go back to the tower, but he's pretty good with that as he has two waves under him. He's happy about the state of the game. Uh, when it comes to the mid lane that we haven't discussed, no one is doing quite all right to 12 CS, uh, 3 denies versus 13 CS, 2 denies on, on uh, Pikachu's Pugna. So, very even. Uh, has to be expected. Pagna isn't really a hero that can win a lane easily versus Zeus. Not early on, at least. Yeah. Top lane. There's an orb of venom on Petshara, and because of that, they can go on epileptic hit. Uh, who does yeah. cancel his TP, but there is Kotal coming in. Yeah, he should get away, but you know, he, he didn't hold steady. He didn't think he was actually going to get the silence off in time. The a little bit of a mistake. Save. Doesn't cost him anything, though. Well, cost him 50 gold. No oh, pause coming out. So far, though, I mean, one seven eight. All their lanes are looking pretty good. CS wise, the top of the charts. Uh, look at the CS and also look at the region. Let's look at the top lane. Uh, Lash has one tango. Um, Legion has two tangos and the Salve and ten sticks. Epileptic Kid <laughs> has nothing more. Both of them, they're done when it comes to region. Yeah, you're a blood seeker and you can heal up, but uh, you won't be able to to move back, heal up, and rejoin the fight. Uh, on the offlane though, Lina and Magnus have a bunch of region, while it's only the Slark left with with um, with Tangos and Salves. So these three minutes, they didn't give us any kills, but they give us some insight in where a fight and a kill should happen. Most likely on that top lane, because the Bloodseeker has no resources to work with. But then again, on the bottom lane, you have so much damage from the Lina and uh, Rezo. You have Lina with Fiery Soul and Lightstruck Array, so it can happen that if someone is out of place, he just gets bursted down. It's a type of lane where someone commits a bit too much and dies for it, I think, right? Like, Lina could bait herself in. Also, on dying, you tend to try and get in their face. Same could happen if Slark just pounces forward. We'll have to see how that one develops. Mid should stay pretty chill for a long time, I think, unless the uh, support rotates. Zeus doesn't... Uh, the other thing I think Zeus is good here, right, is because you can easily quickly shove out the lanes, so Pugna should rarely get a chance to pressure your tower. Early on, at least, he yes. cannot pressure. Early on, he can't pressure as uh, no one is just going to spam it out. Later on, it becomes a little bit easier for Pugna. Comes level 7. But uh, even now, it depends. You see, he pops that nether ward, and Zeus has to be very careful how he uses his spells. He's trying to CS mostly with, with the right clicks, and he might even fall. Oh, the crap fight. Ooh, it's going to be close. Never blast. never blast, just off the map. Uh, he missed, and also fairy fire and sticks were used on Zeus, so pretty good. But on top lane, epileptic kid TPing again. This time, he holds his nerves. Makes it out On the bottom lane as well, save is just zoning them out completely, forcing Slark to use that salve, and maybe with that salve he'll be able to come and fight on this bounty run. Nope. Lina takes two bounties on bot lane, while Big Nam takes one on the top, possibly. If he wants to, he can go and pick up the other two. Yeah, it's just mirror movements from the past four. It's just certain dominance in the relative lanes. I'm wondering, has Rezo made up his mind yet? Ah, uh, yes. This is not going to be in power lane. He's gone for two points in the shockwave. Holding a point still, making up his mind. Hmm. They just keep trying to pressure Legion out. It's just... I guess they can because of the build, right? Like, Petushara has gone all in on the aggression in lane with the overwhelming odds build. It's kind of yeah, interesting to see as well in these melee it's lanes. It's interesting to see just how much Bloodseeker benefits from Kotl. You give him uh, Chakra Magic and suddenly you have... You have a uh, blood right two times in a row in a quick succession. Under goes oh, rough. So, so. Everyone's low on 178. Bignum will go down and be the first blood. An epileptic. Oh, they were waiting for this moment. Zoom, zoom. He's got sticks. 
The Polish Shara is struggling with this. They have a blast. Oh, trying to turn on the life drain. They get him. Go nice on. rotation from Pikachu. Plus, he can found some of the bottom lane of dying survives on almost no HP. They dough him, but he survives using that stick. So fights happening on two lanes, and yeah, one seven eight with that blood secret kill definitely coming out oh, the top. Oh, oh, no! He didn't Happens. pick up the bounty. He left it for the Pugna. Oh dear! Now top life drain. Epileptic needs to move away a bit quicker than this. A lot of damage done. Zeus, however, Bigdom's going to chase him down, and he might be in a bit of trouble here. Oh, that oh no, Bigdom helped him so much. Wow, almost kills him off instantly. I'll scare him There's away. Scottle coming. Yeah. With the Scottle help, uh, Pagna can't go for the Zeus kill. Instead, he needs to move back because of the blinding light. And um, yeah, Zeus almost got the lash there. Luckily for him, again, Pagna is there to save the day. It just shows you the layer upon layers of VP's draft, right? And how they complement each other. You know, with the Fighter Ghost Wrath for the Bloodseeker, with the Chakra for the Zeus. There's a lot of potential kills in the early game for them. One of the best things about Zeus plus Bloodseeker, it's not only the vision, it's not even the vision, it's the blood rage on Zeus. It was always incredibly strong and it hasn't changed, it's still strong. Uh, so it will help that Zeus dish out a lot of damage. Once he gets that Aether Lance perhaps and he's blood raged and the blood rage is higher level, oh. he can blood rage someone else than himself. Ooh, he's gonna die. That was pretty brutal as well. The Soul Rep took like half of his HP pool at that point. Yeah, not giving the respected space to the Slark. I mean, he done a good job early on, but now you talk about points in the dark pack, the pounce. Palantamos isn't afraid of you anymore. Elsie is going to have level 6 here. This is a bait. They need oh. one creep. Oh, the they fortification is good. Solo will still die, though. Yeah, but he'll at least die off before they can get the dual damage in. <laughs> Alright, that's a good thing. Constellation prizes are important. No one does have a haste, so he may move towards bot now. Divine. Arcane boots. And then maybe they can go for a kill on... I'd expect on dying. It's very hard to kill the Slark now that he has six. Still, you have to remember that this is a Slark versus a Bloodseeker. So his ulti doesn't really help him as much as it usually does. And he can't just heal up the way he usually would. Uh, no one and save are here and that's so much burst damage. The Slark has to be careful. There's a haste on Zeus. A lot of AoE as well. They deal with Ash him. is rotating in. They ping him out, they know where he is. Oh, Slark tries to go for Zeus. This is a mistake. Yeah, he moves back instantly. He sees the haste, he respects it. What do you think about this positioning of undying? Do you think like he, he's ambitious? in a good spot right now? If, <laughs> it's ambitious. If he gets seen, he knows he's dead. I guess he's like, you know, no risk, they no reward. See him. They won't see him unless they move there, so he's fine. I don't think they should be doing what they're doing right now unless Pugna comes down. Like if 178 don't bring another hero to this lane, there's no point in them standing there. This is very dangerous. Bloodseeker, Bloodseeker is going to run over there pretty soon too, as he's go going to get that bonus okay. movement speed if they start fighting. It comes Legion as well. Pounce misses. Haste from no one. Pondy God's Wrath goes in looking for Bignum. We'll get him. Now he just kites them out. They have no way of dealing with him. And now Legion's in too deep. Oh no. There's going to be a rupture coming out. Blood right as well. Pushing him around. It's Mount of Science on the side. Lena does get a stun out, but not before dying to Pikachu. And Solo being chased down by Plantamos with the Shadow Dance to clean up the kill. That might be all she wrote. One more hit will do it. Plantamos wants some permanent Aji and he will claim it. Hey, he had blinding light there. He could have killed him so that the zombie finishes him off. He could have blinding lighted him, I mean, but um, instead he used Chakra Magic on himself for some reason. Uh, it's just solo things, I guess. And they'll deny the bot tower as well, unless Rezo has something to say about it. Runes. Little fight going on. Petashara. Mistakes have been made and he will die for it. And another bounty rune top lane will be taken up by Palantimos. A little bit of yoinking going on. Oh, they at least get the bot tower. Oh, well, no, actually, Undying denied it. Oh, dear. That was the plan all along. That Undying that was hiding in the trees. It was on him to go win and steal that tower. That's what he was about. Very long-term plan. I respect it, you know. You invest in the plan, future. You know, exactly. When you're a 200 IQ player such as Happy Diorara, you see the future. And it's easy for you to plan four minutes ahead. Be smart. It must be depressing playing Undying and predicting the future. Usually it's just your death. Usually it's just you running in. Dropping tombstone, tombstone and dying, dying. yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the life of an Undying guy, I know. And now they're starting to circulate around mid. 
Zeus has a problem taking this tower. However, if you leave Pugner alone in this lane for a minute, he'll take it and move on. Does it mean does Petrashara feel a little bit too desperate for a duel? He's been quite a while running around now. If you look at him, uh, it's, if you look at him, like he's definitely desperate for a duel because he's he's not playing your classic LC that's played right now. He's not playing the LC that goes into utility. He's building Bracer into Blink. Um, Bracer into Blink isn't really what LC is about at the moment. It used to be like uh, let's say a year ago or six months ago. Right now, LC's job is to always be there for press the attack and bring good utility. I see Ignis from Solo to save the day. I, mean, I think you're right. It's like the way he's playing this. I guess it's the priority about Zeus, right? I need to duel Zeus. The damage he's he does is too much. Him. Yep, they'll get the win. I mean, Just Solo casually walk is, in. Why not? Solo is so interesting with his decision making. Like, uh, I never noticed it. Like, sometimes. I, I mean, I don't know. I noticed it before too, but it was never this obvious to me. Like, they're trying to kill that Nether Ward. I expected him to try and deny Willow the Wisp instead, Willow Wisp instead. But he tries to go for another ward for which he needs like three more attacks. There is no way you kill that as Kotl before you get duel. He tries, he gets duel, and he gives away that first duel victory damage that you were talking about earlier. That's a happy little Legion commander right now, camping in the woods, farming, super satisfied with a smile on her face. I got the first duel victory. It's not all so grim. I can relax and chill a little bit now. But the biggest smile comes because now you know which one to target in the future. I, I guess that's right as well. Like the way that VP has been, I think with Solo, his playstyle really suited the last roster and that they were ultra aggressive, right? And he was infamous for these smart plays around the Roche pit where he kind of threw his body at them, wasted their time and secured the Roche. But this lineup, especially with like this, uh, this new kid on the block, Epileptic Kid, so mid lane, no he's one? more defensive. No yeah, one might Mercury, go down. No, no, oh, no. not enough. Fedishara gets the second duel win. While that's happening, Bignum does fall in the bot lane to a solo save. And now they get the tower as well. Fedishara is like, run at me. Solo says, okay, but maybe a mistake. Rupture's going to come out on a Pikachu. He'll back away, though. That's got the life drain, but we'll just TP out. How do, you feel, about... Ooh, misses. How do you feel about Rezo so far on... I feel like he's been fairly, I want to say stable. Like, I don't think I've seen drastic errors from him. It's going to take time to, like, fully shift in the role, but I think there's potential there. Yeah, I agree. I think he's all right so far, considering he's mostly been your position one or sometimes two. It looks pretty good so far. Yeah, he's not afraid to, like, you know, sidestep his build and go for items that the team needs. Which is a good part because, you know, when you come from those post one, post two roles, you're used to the way you play the game, right? Whereas the three is more about complementing your, the rest of your team. Like, you do control the early game. Form it. Yeah, there's no way to stop this. They'll back up. They respect it. There's a haste as well in front of the Rosh, so they can use that. This Pugna actually has a lot. He has Aetherlands moving towards the Dagon as well. That Dagon will be very helpful when it comes to winning those duels early and fast. Punch in the blood rage as well. Best oh, way to yeah. really deal with it is nuking. How do you feel about epileptic so far as well from what you've seen? I'm like, I think he definitely has potential, but I wouldn't say that he's on a Ramsey's level. Like, no. He's not like a replacement that's going to fill in those shoes instantly. Maybe there's something that I don't see. I felt the same way when I saw Anna the first time, and then he proved to be amazing, so... It's, it's also very young, epileptic kids, so... <laughs> the Kuna, Light Striker Ray. Oh no, save! Banish him, Funny Ghost Wrath, they don't want to give a duel win over. Take the pot! Oh, what? It's small things like this, right? It's like, is it panicking? Is he just forgetting the important things in the game? There is definitely an element of like these flashy plays that don't really pay off. Ignis, Solo can't protect himself. Another interesting positioning coming out, and now no one will be chased onto as well, but Pikachu they can fight will back here. up. They have RP. They will take down the board, and now they can continue chasing them. But Zeus went back, so because of that, they can't. It looked like they won't even kill the Legion, but Zeus ulti comes in, and he certainly falls. Oh, Bloodseeker could have definitely taken that bounty rune there. Ops, opts not to. By the way, yesterday and in the last week, I saw a lot of Bloodseeker being picked, I guess. And uh, with some, it's drums with a couple of raid bands into Radiance. With some, it's some early BKB. 
with uh, Epileptic Kid, it was Yasha into Maelstrom. That's what he had selected before, but now he sw swapped it out into Manta. Manta, this game versus the Crap Five is all right. Versus, I guess, uh, Sparks Bounce is also good, but uh, we'll see just how much it will be able to do versus Lash and Pagna that have a lot of AoE damage, and those illusions should fall very fast. But it's never truly about illusions for a hero such as Bloodseeker. It's more, more about that cleanse that you get when you Manta. Yeah, most definitely needed against these heroes. And I think the other thing is, the, well, the item choice at first kind of shows you the type of carry that Epileptic is. He very much loves his farming. But VP, they go, guy, look, come on, dude. We've got a Magnus. You're going to get all the farm you need. Just go for something that gets you involved sooner and Rezo will keep empowering. So I'm glad they done that. Yeah, that's why he likes these heroes so much like Naga, PL. He's very much your traditional type of POS1, right? Whereas we're seeing a lot more POS ones shift towards this, you know, involved early type heroes like Gyrocopter, CK, Juggernaut. They'll dominate the lane and then they can get involved in the early fights. Maybe that's the goal here. They picked this for Epileptic because you're a Bloodseeker. You have to be involved. Uh -huh. Speaking of fights, they haven't got the damage to get the duel win and he might get away. Nope. Thunder are there just in time to secure the kill, but not secure the duel. Yeah, Tombstone dropped as well. And that's a lot of commitment for... Uh Magnus, but it's pretty important to slow down his uh, Blink Dagger progression as that will allow Virtus Pro to fight a little bit easier, I think. Radiance top tower we'll see. Yule's being picked up next by Zeus as well, so Aether lands into Yule's. Nothing really too, too um, surprising. Or too surprising. No one in Radiance his classic Zeus build. I've seen it many times before too. It's very good in this game as well because you set up for both the Blood Rite and the Light Strike array. Even skewers, in fact. Also, Lina has that Eterlands completed. Man, this Eterlands is like Dyer's top one item right, right now in the game. How <laughs> uh, so many heroes have you got? Three, yeah. I think we're up to. Zeus, Lina, and. Uh, Pagna. Zeus, Lina, and Pagna. Yeah, but these are the heroes that usually buy it. You're yeah. not going to buy it on the Bloodseeker or Slark, obviously, but. Uh, hey, you never know. A little bit extra reach for that rupture. I wonder if we'll see an Ags this game on the Bloodseeker. Like, there are multiple good targets for Ruptures. Namely, like... the Slark and the Lashrak come to mind. It looks like uh, J178, they want to fight. No, that's right. Fuel comes in, and that'll be a win. Moving forward, Plantamos chase on a no one with the Shadow Dance as well. And no one. Uh oh. RP, nicely done, but where's your damage? Blood Rite going out now. Laguna's there. Dodged out with the Yules. Actually, he mistimes it. As a result, they don't get the damage, but in the end, they have enough to finish off Legion. They'll move across the Epileptic Kid to try and kill off Plantamos, who already used the Shadow Dance. The Crepify buys some time, but the LSA is there. The follow-up should be good. As he goes under the tower, it's a double kill. It might well. be a triple. Pikachu has no escape plan for this. It will now try the TP, but the LSA is there. Lena gets the kill. It looked it looked like J178 definitely have every bite. The RP is used without any damage followed up. Uh, the Blood Rite connects only on one hero, but no one with that Zeus buys just enough time for, for Bloodseeker to take down the Lash and then also join the fight to deal with everyone else. And the Epileptic Kid, there you go, that, there you go, your answer. Is he ab able to like, carry this game? I believe he is. He just needs to get this BKB as soon as possible. Uh, also, I'm not so certain uh, how uh, uh, solo um... is that. Uh, he lives up to his name of riding solo, I guess. Yeah, he like didn't he do that uh, in the last series? Yeah, but it wasn't Ghost. as bad because there wasn't a legion in that one to do this to him. Now it's really bad. This it keeps happening. I mean, legion, dark willow, pretty much the same heroes that will kill solo either way. That's all that matters. Bloodseeker closing up on that BKB. Now with this BKB purchased from his, I'm wondering, is he able to carry this game later on? I think uh, it's the right decision for him to go for this uh, sustaining build like Manta BKB because he has so much damage um, from his teammates. He has Zeus and Lina that can take down targets on their own and will take them low, low enough so he has blood, so he has terrorist uh, stacks on him. And also he will have that Magnus empowering him all the time. And because of that, this build makes a lot of sense. All he has to do is stay alive, run around, take targets, while uh, the rest of his teammates dish out the most damage. Yeah. 
Just once again, I didn't find solo. it as need to go far, man. Speaking of a solo rider. No, this time, there was the plan. The plan was popped way too soon, though. The plan was to waste Willow West. Good plan, Solo. Good job. The important part is he has a plan. This is this is a TI qualifier player, by the way. He's always thinking something. Except from when he's dead. Oh, not TI, TI qualified. Well, he was a qualifier player as well sometimes. But these years... I don't know. If EP improves rapidly, they might be a qualified team this year. J178. They're moving in. Lash is reading the leading the charge, but he doesn't have yules or three bracers. So he can't be the one that catches. Oh. However... As the duel? That one can. Will they kill him in time? Yes, they will. The life drain is more than enough for the Decrepify. And that's now 58 Solo, damage. Uh, that It's a good pick off by 178, but I still think Solo could have played that a bit better. He uses the blinding light so defensively that it only catches the Legion Commander. If he if he perhaps moved in a bit closer and he blinding light the rest away, Magnus like certainly dies still, but he wouldn't feed the damage, I think. I guess it's... Uh, risk assessment. If he comes closer and uses that, maybe he dies too. So yeah, it's that's kind of he didn't do it. He's getting flashbacks to his last few moments of uh, mystery. He's already zero six three. He doesn't want to bleed anymore. And just time bought. VP. What's the next things you're looking at? You're going for the Ags on Zeus. Bloodseeker does have the BKB now, and it, uh, he's going Maelstrom. This is an interesting order to do these items in. Maybe he's just like, hey, my, my mag and my Kotla die more regularly. They won't have the buffs and the protection anymore. So I need to be self-reliant on my farm. No, it's a it's a good item for him as well. You know, like uh, something like a Basher Morse so that you can just do more in the fights? I think Maelstrom maybe will be fine too. That extra magic damage. He'll be alright with the items that he has got right now. And with, Mael with uh, Empower from the mag. I think it can work. I guess my concerns with the BKBs that will be out soon. Lantamos, yep. by the way, being wrapped around on. He's trying to go for a BKB. Still needs the recipe and the rupture is there. We'll Shadow Dance out. There's peace. No fun to go so They can't get him alone off the TP away. Should be successful. The RP won't be oh, there. so close. So close to skewer him, but he wasn't exactly there. And rupture is used. Smoke is used, more importantly, and they get nothing out of it. Uh, but they do take control of this side of the map, at least. Which is always... Uh, Always really important to get some deep wards so you can spot the rotations. And prep for Roche, which they are at a stage where they could. This is one of the beautiful things about Magnus. He does enable you to go for it early with that power buff. Especially on heroes like Bloodseeker. Lena, not too bad for it usually. It's going for the four stuff and getting pretty close now. Pretty important item against a lot of these heroes. Might help you to stop hemorrhaging duels. Epileptic. He's going looking game. for he the rupture. rupture He's yeah. got it now. He'll back up though. All the while, Slark far, far away, just farming to his heart's content. He knows he needs the his BKB before they fight. He's going for Bignum now, but Bignum just keeps his away. Yeah, no way of stopping that. It's a uh, like it's a sad part of Bloodseeker. You rupture someone and they just DP away. Never really, uh, never really a great feeling if you're playing BS. That's why you have a picture of a basher on your wall. Always remember. The basher only way. or a teammate next to you that has yules or anything. Cancel that. Remember when the Bloodseekers kept building yules all the time because they got sick of that crap? Yeah, but it was good. Yeah, the yeah, blood the right. Yules was really good on Seeker back then. Now you need something a bit more, I don't know, involved in the bigger picture, shall we say, such as the BKBs, such as the bashers, the Maelstroms. Kill it and then flip another one. Both teams just staying far away now for the most of it. This game has definitely slowed down. Both sides kind of going, okay, BKBs are up on VP. We need to respect that. And then Solo saying, we're kind of hemorrhaging dual damage a lot. Let's calm down and stick together a lot more. Where's the blink? The blink is completed on Rezo quite a while ago. So yeah. they can get some pickoffs now if they want to. They kind of have to play around Rezo, right? Like, he's built this mech, but we haven't seen any opportunity, shall we say, to use it so far. He used it a couple of, time when, a couple of times when someone is dueled, but it doesn't really uh, help that target because there's too, too much burst on 178. Like, you don't even notice it. You don't even notice that he used it, so that's obviously telling. 
that that mech isn't really super um, effective right now. But this slash might be caught by Rezo. He's eyeing him up, but he's waiting for his teammates, which aren't really close. Yeah, just gonna calm down, back off. I guess that's the point that you know, if you're in a big team fight and you get that mech off and you hit three or four heroes, it maybe changes something. But yeah, as you said, every time it's one person being dueled and it's such a small sliver of HP in comparison to the damage. For the next fight, we will have Palantimos with a bottle double damage. He also has a BKB completed and there's a level 2 Dagon. Ah, uh, the level 12 goal. Or was. There's a level dead solo. Yeah, he leveled up on his deaths. He's on 7 now. Also with that DD, they can continue pursuing, they can continue finding fights. I don't think they'll go into the pit. They don't have a lot of utility from that uh, Legion Commander, no lads, no medallions, so rushing is uh, easy for them and there's blood right, there's Zeus versus you. So because of that they're trying to uh, they're, they're trying to get more pickoffs even though it looked like they're right next to the pit. They're wrapping around Lina. pretty heavily here. Lena four stuff away. Rezo has the, the RP. RP. Beautifully done. Stacks on all three. Now Epileptic trying to go ham against the attack speed he might be able to. Pikachu will go down. Did he DC? He just BKB and stood there, that's bad. Follow up, Bignum needs to escape quicker than this. So Rupp will keep him alive. And I'm waiting for that DC sign because Pugna just stood there and done nothing. It's the rupture, I guess. He was ruptured and he had BKB, so he couldn't do anything. Uh, he had no options. He, could, he couldn't he could decrepify E-Kid because E-Kid had BKB on and he couldn't decrepify himself because he had BKB. So his only option pretty much was to stand there and AFK. He Man. didn't DC, but it was the next closest thing. Sure, I thought maybe Nova Blast or Summer come out. I guess the TP wasn't there or he didn't have any. Uh, the worrying thing though is RP caught three of them and they only kill one. So uh, I think this isn't the best option for them to just go into the pit this way. They have to respect the fact there's still a DD on Slark. Which he hasn't used yet. It's like, that wasn't the time guys. Pugna's back up. Maybe we can use it now. This might be a smoke. They Definitely, yep. I think for them it's the best thing to smoke up and catch a target with dual, blow it up and then uh, fight off of that. They just checked how much HP Rosh has, they they see that it's on 60%. There's they no RP it. now, they don't care about the Magnus anymore so they can easily clean it up. Mm -hmm. Also Zeus, Bloodseeker and Kotal are so far away. They're, they cannot contest this. Oh, the they're Zeus actually scared. scare them. Yeah, Zeus ulti does scare them, and Bloodseeker is actually TPing in. He's going to use the Blood right inside, perhaps he'll BKB and jump. Need a godly skewer player right now, but he's being stopped from going in, and there it is. Vegas gets picked up. The back line, there's going to be a duel coming up. Bloodseeker is winning that right now. The Soul Rook to try and keep him alive, he's going to give damage, but he says Slark is down. Hedit Shara will escape for the moment. They need to regroup and get the hell out of dodge. Slark got what? ruptured, <laughs> and blinding lighted, and Did he just died. <laughs> <laughs> he used his ulti and he just died like he was flying around in rupture. He couldn't sustain that. And so they did get the Aegis, but instantly they take the Aegis down. And although Rich Pro didn't really contest the Aegis pickup, they contested the team that took it and they killed their Aegis carrier instantly after. So uh, the next team fight that they have is going to be on even grounds. It won't be any 6 versus 5 sort of scenario. Pikachu. Oh, Ignis goes down. Pugna. I he might go down. BKB. Not the scenario you want to use it in, but he has no real choice here. He needs to be actually be careful because it's running There's out. No There's Blood, no rupture. There's no right? rupture, so... Yeah. That's the 10 second though. Or oh, 9 second rubber. That still feels Thanks. painful to have to do. And you mentioned the rupture. I'm surprised Epileptic's not eyeing up an Ags actually with how this game is going. You can't. Like if you're a position 1 like this and everyone else is pretty much magic damage. You're the only one physical damage dealer. You have to go for these... Uh, right click damage item builds perhaps afterwards you can get an agonims later but right now butterfly is definitely something that i think is better pikachu just wanted the rune oh no he got pushed in the pit no one takes no the one haste. he needs to run haste gets away just in time that's a little bit too close for comfort that's so bosey has to be careful there's rupture now yep and he's there ruptured. it is run forest run run to the forest the blood right the blood further away and left he's going in the good could go out, but they get it in time. RP's going to be there. The duel there as well. But the stuns are going to come out. They get sidestepped as a result. But Lina doesn't give the duel over. Bignum getting pretty low. Needs to get the hell out. Laguna won't quite finish him off. But no one will. Epileptic chasing even deeper. Looking for more. And he's going to find it. Look Triple kill already. Damage from him. Blood, blood, blood. He can smell it. You're seeping out of every wound. As he misses kill. out on the rampage. But he will get the ultra. This is what we needed from the kid. 
finally the kid shows up ultra kill we were talking about him talking if he's capable of filling ramsey's shoes but uh yeah that was pretty good four buybacks are available on 178 which one of these heroes is going to have to use it because bottom lane is being pushed it won't take them long either look at that damage coming out the empower they do need rezo here to renew the empower though come on get your ass across here give the important buffs out they just gonna let also, it go. Also, Rezo, the way he played that fight, I have to say, was uh, the RP into the skewer on the Slark, preventing Slark from leaping away from Bloodseeker. Uh, because he was just about to jump over the cliff again. Epileptic Kid, he moved around the cliff to get to the Slark, and then Slark was just trying to jump off of it once Silence is gone, and now Slark. <laughs> Alright. Palantimos, my sir. RP value found, and dead for 60 seconds. Here, little fishy. That was no RP, that was just rupture into the Oh, no, yeah, rupture, sorry. <laughs> what the hell? He disappears so quickly. Uh, yeah, people who've been sitting here going, Bloodseeker's not a hero. Pay attention to this. In some ways, it's cheesy, but you can't say they're not winning. The BKB he gets low epileptic. He's healing up, though. He's staying alive. LSA is out. Legion goes down. He's back in the base. Feeling pretty healthy for a guy who's just on 10% HP. You're 178 right now. You're saying, get me the hell out of this game. What is this Bloodseeker? What are we meant to do against this? We just can't kill it. What can you do? You can just chill. There's no Slark, no Legion for a second. My oh my. Well, they at least hurt him a lot because of the Blood Rage, but... He ain't leaving. They need to kill Pikachu because he's the one who keeps bringing him so low. Oh, skewer. Happy Diorara found. LSA connects. They need to get out though. They're out of mana. They're out of resources. Radiant's top tower is under attack. They go back. They're super happy with what happened. They Maybe they lose escape. solo. It's the typical way it happens, but it looks like you'll get out. BP evolved. No casualties this time. What did they get? They got one side, they got a buyback, and they're pretty cool with what happened. The Epileptic Kid has that Maelstrom completed Mjolnir as well. If he wants to buy it, he can. It's just Bloodseeker versus Slark. They kind of messed up with that third pick Slark, and I was wondering if Bloodseeker is going to be strong enough, and he most certainly is strong enough still to deal with the Slark. Also, Bloodseeker is one of the heroes that was uh, highly contested in the last week, so I'm surprised. A team picks the Slark without at least banning it out. Yeah, it's a peculiar option. And it might be the death of 178 at this rate. Epilep is going towards the Satanic next. He realizes that was too close for comfort on multiple occasions. And he won't let it happen again. Yeah, he doesn't really have a lot of save on his uh, side. A lot of damage, a lot of stuns. But not a whole lot of saves on his side. So getting some Satanic to beef things up definitely is good for him. That stats resistance plus the active is pretty good. They feel it's time to open up the remainder of 178's base and prep for one big fight after the next Roche, which could spawn in two minutes. Unlikely they try and get on the high ground before that unless 178 make a big mistake. They're rocking around right now. Rezo has the RP. There it is. Connects on the two. It gives Skewer across out of the blood right into the Ignis. BKB Pikachu runs away. But Undyne not so lucky. Buys back straight away. Duel comes out. That's a mistake though. Pedestrara. What? All right. Epileptic Kid will take the damage happily. Moves on to Palantimos who will go down as well. This Bloodseeker is unstoppable. Double kill already. Will it be more? Bignum backs away. But they'll re-engage. Because that's going to be a dieback on Happy Diorara. And on the side. Well, they still lose Pikachu. This is looking all but over now. Bignum runs yeah, far, far away. There's a buyback on Legion, and Biglam is trying to get those bounty, perhaps give buyback to the rest of his teammates. But he needs a lot more gold for that Slark to be back up in action. And he's too far away, I guess. Epileptic Kid will take at least the mid tower, mid, mid Raxes, that is. No, I don't think they're going to stop until taking no, the they baseless. No, they're, they're going for the top Raxes too, 100%. No reason not to. Now, maybe there's a small opportunity for 178. Nope. So they say, yeah, that's just done. GG. No solution to the Bloodseeker. I don't want to say Ruffle Stomp, but this combo, Bloodseeker, Zeus, and even the Cottle together, just... I mean, it was looking tasty early on, but then once Rezo started getting those RPs in, 
178. I, I don't know what to say, Liz. I felt like early on, there was a small window which they were pushing really well. But I think you mentioned it. You know, Slark, he takes one or two bad fights at one or two moments. He gets caught out with that rupture skewer back and instantly dies. And it just feels like the game's done from there. They took Rosh and they lost Rosh in one second. They took Rosh and uh, they lost that Slark with ages, like with one rupture and, and blinding light. But that shouldn't happen. They played all right all, all over the map, but they just got outplayed by Virtus Pro. Uh, VP was just a bit better, had a better grasp on their strategy and their, their playing um, gameplay, what they're supposed to be doing. Bloodseeker versus Slark honestly is a bit Bloodseeker oriented and it's, it's easier for Bloodseeker to win this matchup, just rupture the little fish and follow it around. Um, also, it's Bloodseeker plus Zeus which gives Zeus like a tremendous damage dealing capabilities. Where is that? No one Zeus. 46,000 damage in this game. <laughs> the next is Epileptic Kid with 41, but Zeus dealt a bit more. He um, was definitely catching up, that's for sure. Yeah. Also, it... Rezo with the Empower helped him out a lot. And it's a second time VP win versus this team with a different kind of a strategy. And I like to see this. I was questioning their first uh, draft. I still don't think that draft should have won but uh, they executed it very well and this second game they executed what they've got again really well big props to epileptic kid he played out of this his mind this game and he definitely did carry them to the victory and to the minor i believe right yeah that should be them qualified and honestly i think this kid has potential he's sure in that game i like that they put him on something more active because I mentioned it before, he loves his Nagas, he loves these things like PL, we get it. But right now, the meta doesn't kind of support that that much, right? You want a carry that can be more active between the 10 and 20 minute mark. And Bloodseeker, he ticks those boxes. And this combo, some people will say it was cheesy, but you know, the fact they got this strategy in and it counts so much of J178 is just as much on 178, maybe not reading the draft perfectly, as it is on VP finding the game where it could actually be played. Uh, someone we also we talk about a lot. It's like, oh man, someone took a cheese strategy. They picked a Meepo. You have to have the right game for these type of strategies. And I don't know. I, I, I like we said mid-game. I like what Rezo is bringing to the team. I like that he's willing to be the sacrificial lamb. I mean, when you're when you're an off laner who used to be a carry and you're finishing one free sixteen, it doesn't look that impressive. But his RPs were godly. His skewers turned some big fights and murdered this Slark. I'm excited, Liz. I think this team has potential. You know, they're not just there yet. This The reason that they're in this is because they didn't make it to the major, but it's going to be interesting to see how they develop over the coming months. Yep. They go to the minor, at least. I don't think... I mean, le let's be honest. It's a great flunk for them. It's a massive flunk to get to a minor and not to a major. It's Virtus Pro. Like, they weren't even thinking about minors last year. I don't know. I, I just, it's a huge downgrade, no matter what you think about it. It's a huge downgrade for a team. Perhaps it will work out in three months. But, dude, like, if you think about that last year's lineup, they consistently won two big tournaments, finishing first or second on the majors. You lose TI, and suddenly, because of that, you, you, you disband. Like, what? How does that even make sense? Like, that, that's ridiculous. You're winning throughout the whole game, and you, and you change your roster after one tournament. I guess they were just sick of each other. <laughs> I mean, I know that for a fact. But yeah, you get to that stage you... where people just start blaming each other. It's like, well, why? Like, if we're that great, why can't we win the biggest tournament in the world? You know? And yeah, but you, um, that's my point. I actually had a podcast last last night with KitKat and Scanzor, and Scan made a really good point. Like, why are you considered not good? If you won almost every big tournament or ended the top three every big tournament during the year, but you flunked on the TI, like that doesn't make you bad. Like in any no. other sport, that would that would make you the greatest. If it was like a league based system, they would be number one. They would be the ones that actually lift that trophy, you know. But this way, they they disband, they make a new squad, and this squad just made it to a minor, but not a major. Sadly for them, hopefully. Uh, they'll do well in the minor as I'm looking forward to this team. This epileptic kid, uh, he does show promise, definitely. I was questioning his plays with Naga. They weren't great. His Blood Secret plays were on point. And so so were the PL ones. So looking forward to uh, to this dude and what he has to show. Yeah, they got a little bit of time before they fly out for Summer 11. Hopefully they'll kind of innovate a bit more, maybe get epileptic a bit more on these aggressive type heroes. 
And who knows where they'll end up. But congrats to Virtus Pro. They do make it to the minor. However, there are two slots up for grabs, Liz. So tomorrow the action continues. I'm not sure if we're on it yet. I'll have to get confirmation. We usually do these schedules by um, within less than 24 hours is kind of the esports standard. But tomorrow should be Hell Racers versus Orbit Gold. And then the winner of that versus JF Schiff 178 for the final spot from the CIS region. We're done though. You bye can, bye. Yeah. Thank you for See watching, ya. everyone. I love you. I've been Lizard. That's been Killer Pigeon, my faithful companion when it comes to casting. And I'm sorry for shouting. See you tomorrow if we even cast anything. I love you guys. Mwah. Hands up. Mwah. Yeah.